Let, let's go through how we take the full armor. Mm -hmm. Number Amen. one, buckled up by truth. And what I, I think about when I think of this is no Roman soldier would think of going out without his big, thick leather belt. It held all their gear in place. But more than that, normal dress for a soldier was a giant square of material with, with three holes in it, a head hole and two arm holes. And it was just like wearing a tent. And so they needed the, the restraint to strap around them so that in combat their, their tunic would not be flying around kind of like a girl twirling in her big, you know, dress that, that uh, looks pretty twirling. It doesn't look pretty when you're fighting. Someone can grab that and pull you over and trip you or it can get caught on something. So they would cinch up and put into this big thick belt which was laden with all their armaments that they needed for warfare. It was their utility belt and what held everything together, the belt of truth. Basically for us, the, the truth that holds us up and holds us in and protects us from falling is the restraint that we get from God's word. God's truth, the word is aletheia, is both the content of truth and the truthfulness of our life. So is your life belted in by truth so that when life shakes around, there aren't loose things that are just scattering all over the place. It reminds me of going to amusement park. Now, I don't like amusement parks, but if you went to one and paid good money to sit in this chair, and all of a sudden, something comes down, and the little worker goes, and makes sure it's really tight around you, and it squeezes you in. And then they look at you and say, oh, you can't have that purse on the floor. Oh, hold on to that, those glasses, or your camera will fly out. Give it to someone else because you're going to be shaken and twisted and, and put upside down. Did you know life is like a roller coaster? And truth is what belts us in and keeps all the parts of life from flying out and getting destroyed. And any lack of truth causes us to get in a disaster if there's not integrity. If we're not the same people smiling with a Bible on our lap on Sunday as we are on Friday and all week long, and last night, if there's a great difference, if you are like a chameleon and you kind of adapt to your surroundings and here you're reflecting God and the rest of the week you don't, that's a lack of truth and you'll be falling out of your roller coaster car and falling into that emptiness or that lack of hope. But secondly, it says that we are to be guarded by this clamshell this breastplate of righteousness. The Roman soldier had, a, had also this, this amazing piece of equipment that was sleeveless armor that covered him from the neck down, past his waist, that protected all of his vital organs, including his heart, lungs, and intestines. It was made of cloth or leather. It was sewn with pieces of animal hoofs, bones, metal, and it formed a barrier that swords and spears and arrows couldn't penetrate. For us as believers, this righteousness is to be consciously put on. Did you catch that? Consciously put on. You know what that means? It's not the justifying righteousness of Christ because I can't put that on. He already placed that on me. It's called imputed. And that's from his department. It's like an electronic transfer. Boom, he did it. I can't put it on. This is practical, personal, chosen, living in obedience that we put on, that guards us. It is the conscious putting on what the Lord says that we are to put on, like a soldier's armor protecting our lives. Satan wants to cloud our emotions. I mean, think about what Satan wants to do. If we don't wear this, Satan wants to cloud our emotions with anger, impatience, and selfish ambition. The breastplate of righteousness is me consciously learning to say no to anger, no to impatience, and no to selfish ambition. Satan wants to confuse our thinking with errors and lies, so I have to obediently feed my mind truth and set my mind on things above. I go back to my friend this week that feels empty because he spends his time playing games rather than feeding his mind that is the... the our mind is the, the meeting place between the physical and the spiritual world. The mind is kind of like the chamber where the spirit world connects with the physical world. And if you do not fill that with the truth of God, then the lies of the devil begin building up 
and clogging and confusing. And Satan wants to desensitize to sin so we lose our compassion. And he wants to inflame all of our natural tendencies that we were born with to hide, to rationalize, and to blame our sin on others. Remember, right in the Garden of Eden, as soon as, as God said, what's going on, Adam says, oh, it's not my fault, it's her fault. And she says, oh, it's not my fault, it's the snake. I always talk to snakes and do whatever they say. You know, and she just, I mean, it, it's just blaming and hiding. That's just how we're wired. And God says, no. We are safe only when we have our thoughts captivated by Christ, when we set our mind on things above, and without that righteousness by choice, we're constantly getting not lead poisoning. I was thinking about, you know, all the, the in, people that live in Flint with, with drinking in that toxic element. And everybody's concerned about it. So get bottled water. We don't want any of that bad stuff. Yet, we're allowing in far more toxic material to poison our lives when we don't wear the choice of clothing ourselves with righteous acts. Well, onward, the, the next piece is firmly, look at verse 15. We're supposed to be firmly planted in our shoes of peace. Rome's legions marked across the rugged, drag, uh, jagged, and treacherous paths of the ancient world with a steady cadence. Their feet were protected by specially designed war gear, strapped on reinforced sandals with built-in spikes for traction, stability in their hand-to-hand -hand combat. The ancient world knew that those men could go up and down and always have firm footing because Rome designed the ultimate footgear. What is our footgear? Well, the scriptures say that we're supposed to be planted in the shoes of peace. When we strap on the truth of our salvation, we can walk confidently. What's the truth of our salvation? God is no longer our enemy. He's our father and protector. God has already defeated our enemies, the devil and death. We're, we're already, we've won. God has surrounded us with his presence and peace. And we're to have his goodness and wisdom and power and presence that gird us. We, that's, that's the peace that that passes our understanding that people can't understand. And when we exhibit it, people are drawn to us. It's like they go, where are you from? You are different. Do you, do you know what peace is? The peace of God is we get detached from being anxious about our circumstances. It's connected to joy. Joy is the, the persistent state of joy when our lives are no longer up and down with our circumstances. That's joy, and the peace comes when we look at everything around us and say, I am related to God. He is my Father. He is greater than all and has given me all things, and I can be firmly planted, unlike the wicked who are like the raging sea, who are restless, who are tossed, who are endlessly dashed upon all the rocky circumstances along the shores of life. That's everybody we live around and work with. They're just being dashed on the shores of life. And they don't even know it's, it's just, have you ever seen someone knocked over by a wave and beaten on the rocks and your heart goes out to them? That's how our heart should go out to everybody around us. And that's what we should not be like if we wear these shoes of peace.